Coming up, foodies get excited. Steak and Shake is almost one month away from its grand opening here in Hazard, and it's looking for employees. Any UK doctor released an app to simplify our understanding of surgery. Plus, a new paramedic certification program is coming to Hazard. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. It is 5.30 on Tuesday, May the 14th. I'm Will Puckett. Thank you for tuning in to Mountain News this morning. Well, it was another beautiful night to sleep with the windows open, and I did just that. But if you're heading out to work or to school this morning, you might need a light jacket for some of the day. Brandon has been brought in, so Brandon, I'll hand it off to you. Good morning. Good morning, and things are looking a little bit foggy in spots this morning. In the key, especially, take a look. We see the look at weather camera there where it's been pretty foggy at times, and so just be careful as you head out the door this morning. Clouds are moving out, so that's some good news for you. Fog is still moving in, though, so keep that in mind as you travel. Be careful. Temperatures in the 40s, close to 50 the further east you go, and that's quite a bit of a difference from this time yesterday morning. So today, though, good news is temperatures will get into the mid-60s, a little warmer than yesterday. Full forecast on the way here in just a few minutes. Will? All righty, Brandon. Thank you. It is only a week until Kentucky voters head to the voting booth in this year's primary election. One of the biggest races on the ticket, the race for governor. Last night at KET, we heard from three of the four candidates running in the Democratic Party. House Minority Leader Rodkey Atkins, Attorney General Andy Bashir, and former State Auditor Adam Edlin talked about several key issues, including the state's pension system and working across the aisle with a Republican majority. The three candidates also talked about how they would improve funding for higher education. Here are their answers. Has really shifted that cost to the backs of parents and students um, and put it right on their backs and on their shoulders in student debt and basically a tax increase to be very honest. And that's not acceptable. It's not acceptable if we want to compete in this global economy. It's not acceptable if we want to keep the business and industry that we have here now. So more revenue has to be put into higher education. Our plan to fund pensions is critically important to higher education because they're waiting on a special session right now. Why? because the pension costs that this governor is putting on them are going to absolutely crush them. That's why new revenue is critical, and we immediately decrease that burden. Um, Fifteen years ago, two-thirds of the budgets of our universities were funded by state government. Now it's less than a third. And so what we're going to have to do is have a governor who leads from the front and goes to communities and says, we have to close these loopholes. Now, Jeff Young is also running in the Democratic primary, and here is a look at the Republican race. Governor Matt Bevin will run for re-election against Representative Robert Goforth, Ike Lawrence, and William Woods. A date has been set for the first extraordinary session of the West Virginia Legislature in 2019. Lawmakers will reconvene starting at 2 p.m. Monday, May 20th. According to House Speaker Roger Hanshaw, lawmakers and education officials are nearing consensus on a path forward with education reform. That will empower local communities and increase flexibility in the state's education system. Speaker Hanshaw said officials hope to have a news conference Wednesday afternoon to unveil further details. The Attorney General's office is going after three insulin manufacturers who say they inflated insulin prices. The lawsuit claims the insulin makers violated Kentucky's consumer protection law. The Attorney General's office argues the companies raised prices at least 10 times since 2008. Eli Lilly, Sanofi, Aventis, and Novo Nordisk are all named in the lawsuit. Sanofi called the allegations meritless. A meeting of community members took place in Hazard Monday. The meeting was hosted by the Kentucky River District Development Development District rather in Kentucky River Community Care. Part of the meeting put on by KRCC was to train people on how to use naloxone or commonly known as Narcan. The idea is to get it to people who are out on the front lines in case an overdose happens so they can step in before first responders arrive. It's not going to do any good if it's sitting on the shelf in someone's office. The community is who is seeing what's going on. They're out there, they've got first-hand knowledge, and if they have the naloxone in their hand and they have an opioid overdose around them, they're the ones that can save the lives. Mullen Smith says even with naloxone, the first instinct should be to call 911. 
Many of us have been there. You're given a medical diagnosis, but it can be hard to decipher what the doctor is actually trying to tell you. A University of Kentucky doctor is trying to eliminate that confusion by way of a simple app. Dr. Michael Winkler specializes in radiology at UK Healthcare's Gill Heart and Vascular Institute. However, his passion is for the arts. He even has a bachelor's degree in sculpture. It was this background that gave him the idea to combine medicine with art to improve the patient experience. My own background is in fine art and sculpture. My undergraduate degree was in sculpture. So I have a natural pull that I feel over to this side of the campus. Mixing Cup is the app designed by Dr. Winkler. He chose to publish the app as an open access app so that patients and doctors everywhere could take advantage of the service. A new paramedic certification program is coming to hazard. Officials say this is the first time in several years that Eastern Kentucky is at a program like this. WIMT's Lauren McCourt explains. Each day, paramedics are called out to save lives. You have to be able to do advanced life support on many different types of patients. And all across the Commonwealth, there's a great demand for them. Hundreds, literally across the state, for paramedics and EMT. So, the State Fire Rescue Training Area 12 and Hazard Community and Technical College are coming together to teach a paramedic certification program. This paramedic class is the first one of its kind in a couple of years in Eastern Kentucky. This will be much more than your average two-hour class. It's a combination of lecture and lab and clinical. They'll actually do some ride-alongs as part of the program. Because you never know when you will have to put these life-saving skills to use. You don't have a level one trauma center just around the corner. Though the course may be a little challenging. So as soon as you're finishing up with this class, there's gonna be a large jo job pool available. Reem says the end results are worth it. In Perry County, Lauren McCourt, WYMT Mountain News. The application deadline for the program is June 30th. For more information on how you can sign up for the courses, you can check out our website, WYMT.com. The seventh location on the Southeastern Kentucky Rehabilitation Industries, or SECRI, had its grand opening in Middlesbrough yesterday. The SECRI works to employ those who have a hard time finding work due to disabilities, and around 70 more jobs could be coming with its opening within a year. WYMT's Hannah Reynolds has more on that. Tommy Smith works in quality control for Secre's newest location in Middlesboro. It was kind of hard, like when after you retire, when you get my age, you're as old as I am, and you still need to work. It's hard to find a job. Meticulous work on sewn military products that Secre employees bring to the table is what officials say has allowed Secre to continue to grow and open their seventh location. We plan to have a significant impact on the community, both from a uh, from an economic standpoint and also from the jobs we provide. Secre is not only planning to bring up to 100 jobs into the area by the end of their first year in Middlesboro, but around 75% of those working at Secre are disabled, broadening opportunities on a greater scale. There's a great work ethic in Eastern Kentucky. We believe in hard work for an honest day's pay. Uh, and they'll be happy here. The company will enjoy this. Impacting more than just the company for a long time to come. In Bell County, Hannah Reynolds, WYMT Mountain News. The Middlesbrough location is Secre's seventh operation. Steak and Shake is almost one month away from its grand opening right here in Hazard. Yesterday at the EK SEP Center, they hosted a job fair and had open interviews for people interested in working at the restaurant. Steak and Shake is looking to bring more than 70 jobs to Perry County. Uh, we're here to do an interviews for the Steak and Shake coming in June, and we're looking for qualified and uh, experienced people. So we're just excited about, you know, getting people hired in and getting them trained and just excited about getting started. The grand opening is set for June 17th at 10 a.m. A driver hit multiple cars near the double quick and hazard Wednesday evening and police are still looking for the person behind the wheel. Now those involved want answers. Nora Hall was one of the drivers who was hit. Her 9 and 15 year old daughters were in the car with her at the time. They all made it out OK, but her mind keeps going back to the what if. I know the cops, the police are doing all they can, but I hope that the community will help uh, look for this person because I'm sure that the other 
um, three drivers would like some answers too of why this person took off instead of um, waiting to see if anybody was hurt. Hall, along with the other drivers, were able to catch a glimpse of the vehicle that struck them. It is described as a white pickup truck with a black lift gate and toolboxes on the side. It will also have some front end damage with it. Anyone with information is asked to call the Hazard Police Department. And ahead on this morning, the people of Cincinnati, Ohio, are mourning the loss of their hometown Hollywood star. It's going to take us a couple more days to rebound, but once we do, the sky is the limit for temperatures. I'll tell you about some much warmer conditions coming up in about three minutes.